This video is one in a series of technical tutorials produced by PlexTech RF Integration. Hello and welcome to the latest uh, video demonstration from PlexTech RF Integration. Today we're going to be looking at understanding IP2. Um, in fact, we're going to look at many uh, order intercept points, but uh, the second one is the one that seems to confuse a lot of people. So we'll begin by looking at third order, for example, which most people understand. We'll move on to explain second order ones in a lot more detail, and then we'll look at uh, nth order, where n could be any number you like. Uh, we're going to be using the latest version of ADS, and we're going to be using a GAN power amplifier as our demonstrator. So let's quickly pop into our two-tone test bench. So we have a simple amplifier here, uh, X-band Cree GAN, um, simple single stage uh, for this example, two pole reactive ma match, input match, and two pole reactive output match, and all the bias components, etc. Very simple amplifier for this uh, demonstration. So we're going to be looking at two tone intercept points. Uh, so we're going to put two tones into our amplifier, RF freak and RF frequency 2, and we're going to put the same power level, RF power. So normally this is a, a small signal, has to be about 10 dB backed off from uh, P1dB to get a, a good accurate answer. Uh, we're going to be putting 0 dBm in. Uh, don't forget this is a gallium nitride amplifier, so we want fairly large input powers. We're going to look at a fundamental of 12 gigahertz to begin with, and our second tone will be 10, mega, 10 megahertz offset from this, so 12.01. So, here's our secret. We, we put down a harmonic balance controller, and we have to choose what numbers to put. Okay, so we're going to put RF Frec and RF Frec 2 into our amplifier. To begin with, I'm going to look at um, a maximum of two times the fundamental and two times the second fundamental, either second harmonics only. And max order is uh, the maximum uh, product we're going to look at. So I'm going to pick three here. So third order is going to be the maximum that we're going to see on our output spectrum. And then ADS gives you uh, a measurement here already defined for you called IP3 out. So third order to begin with. Um, the trouble with this is you do have to get your numbers correct. So I'll try and explain this. This is the output voltage uh, at the load. Uh, this is the signal we're going to use as our fundamental. So it's one times the first tone, zero times the second tone, i.e. It is, it is the 12 gigahertz fundamental. And this is our intermod and it's third order, so these two numbers, modulus, have to, have to add up to three. We're going to look at two times the fundamental minus one of the second tone to give us our standard third order. And then the third number is the uh, characteristic impedance of the system. Okay, so let's see what happens when we put, uh, when we simulate this. Okay, let's have a, just a quick look at the small signal parameters. Okay, so this is our amplifier, unconditionally stable. We're running off 28 volts and biasing that crescent bias point of around 100 milliamps per millimeter gate width. So our amplifier easily covers 9 to 12 gigahertz. 12 gigahertz, uh, we've got about 12 dB gain. Okay, so pretty neat uh, single stage amplifier. Let's now have a look at our third order products. So the reason I'm really doing this is uh, Third order intercept point, most engineers understand. Um, and I say the measurement is inbuilt in ADS for you, but you do have to get the numbers correct. And what I like to do is replicate the uh, test conditions when we finally build and measure this amplifier. So this, if you can imagine, is a spectrum analyzer we're going to measure our amplifier on. So first of all, we look at the uh, full span of our spectrum. So this is frequency. And we see. Uh, the fundamentals, second harmonics, and the maximum frequency we're going to see um, is two times one of our frequencies plus one of the other, i.e. Right, third order. Um, so that's 36.02 gigahertz. And if we zoom in around our fundamental outputs, we see the classic uh, third order products. And of course, this explains beautifully why they're important. So this is our 12 gigahertz signal, our amplified signal. This is our 12.01 second tone amplified. And we get these two 
tones, which are equal to twice one minus one of the other. And if these two signals are separated by 10 megahertz, then these two tones are 10 megahertz either side of our two fundamentals. Now, uh, here is the uh, ADS inbuilt measurement, 37.229 dBm. So the classic interview question for a microwave RF engineer is how do you calculate IP3 from this uh, spectrum analyzer plot? And I've seen a lot of people struggle. Uh, is it the absolute value? Do I take the difference? Um, but really, it, there's a real simple equation to remember. And it's simply that any nth order intercept point is n times the fundamental minus one of the intermods divided by n minus one. So in the third order case, it's three times the fundamental uh, minus the one of the intermods divided by two. Okay, so I've set up this calculation here, uh, three times marker four minus marker five over two, and what do I get? 37.229, exactly the same answer. A, it gives me confidence that the ADS inbuilt model is correct. I've put the correct uh, two minus ones and the 50 in the block, and from a spectrum analyzer plot, I've got exactly the same answer. So the classic third order one. Now, I think what often confuses people is second order intercept points. So I'm gonna begin by looking at, again, two tones. I'm just gonna look at the two fundamentals and the maximum order I'm gonna look at this time is two. Okay, so one, a fundamental one, one a fundamental two, and the maximum uh, order is second order. So again, ADS has this inbuilt model, rather than IP2, it's IPN, so you need to define, uh, get these equations right again. So this time it's the output voltage at the load, the output current at the load, the first tone, the second tone, and the order. So notice that the third number this time is the order, not the characteristic impedance. So I'm gonna be looking at one times my fundamental and no times my uh, second tone and looking at um, second order products. So basically there's a second order product at one, one, and there's one at one, minus one. Let's just press F7 again. And this time we'll look at our second order products. So what we now see is on a, on a fairly wide span. So um, the maximum signal we're gonna be looking at is one of our signals plus one of the other signals, I12 plus 12.01 is 24.01. Um, and this is what happens. We have our two fundamentals here, so there are actually two signals on top of each other. Our 12 and our 12.01 are seen on top of e each other here on this span. And we have second order inters, inter, second order intermod products, sorry, at this point and this point. Now this point is one minus one, so it's 12.01 minus 12, i.e. it's the difference, it's the 10 meg difference between the two signals. This one is one plus one, so it's 12 plus 12.01, so marker six is 24.01. So this is the, this one for example, is very important in um, down converters and particularly direct conversion and low IF because you might be talking IF around DC to 10 megahertz and you have an intermod product that falls down there. In terms of a transmit amplifier, then obviously we want our second harmonic content to be low and this intermod appears around the second harmonic frequencies. So we want this to be low as well. So we want, uh, we basically have two uh, second order inset points and in this particular case of a transmit amplifier, it's the high one that's uh, the important one. Again, um, Agilent, so key site now, give us the uh, answer 55.841. My calculation, so remember this time it's gonna be two times the fundamental minus one of the intermods divided by two minus one is one, and I get exactly the same answer. And of course I have two outputs and uh, second order intercept points, one for the low intermod and one for the high intermod, and they are different. Now, people often confuse the output second order intercept point with the second harmonic intercept point. And in this case, the second harmonic intercept point is not being calculated because basically this is two times fundamental 
uh, and we're not asking for two times fundamental in our test bench. Essentially, here, I can look at second order intercept points. I can't look at the second harmonic intercept point because I'm not allowing it to look at the second harmonics individually. Second harmonic intercept point is the second order product, but rather than 1, 1 or minus 1, 1, it's 2, 0 or 0, 2. So we basically do have to change both these numbers, or at least one of these numbers, to a 2. And again, I'm going to leave this fixed at 2 because I only want to look at second order, no third order, etc. for this particular example. So again, I take the IPN measurement, and this time I put fundamental and its second harmonic and second order. So what we see here now is this a graph, graph appears to be the same, uh, but essentially we do have more tones appearing here. You can see from these red blobs here, and likewise uh, there's a signal down at DC as well as the 10 megahertz now. When we zoom in around the second harmonic, what we see is the previous intermod, the second, or, second order high intermod product, but we also see the two second harmonics. So that is 24, i.e. two times F1, and that is 24.02, i.e. 2 times F2. And this is the second order intermod. And all three are very close to each other. And they are different levels, but you know, if you don't want to, if your a transmit envelope is important, then all of these signals need to be as low as possible. So going back up to here now, we actually see our two output second order intercept point calculations, and now our second harmonic intercept, which is basically just the measure of the level of the second harmonic, but expressed as an intercept point, i.e. two times fundamental minus the second harmonic, uh, rather than just a, a dB below the carrier figure that most people use. And what you notice is that the, uh, the two signals that we're interested in, uh, the output IP2 high and the second harmonic intercept point, differ by 6 dB. This is the uh, standard rule of thumb in the microwave world. Now, strictly speaking, the second harmonic intercept point should actually be a one-tone measurement. You only need to put one tone in, you get your second harmonic out, and measure the difference between the two as an intercept point rather than a, a dB below the carrier figure. So, have I, strictly speaking, done this correct on a two-tone bench? Well, there's, there's, there's a couple of ways to test this. Firstly, I'm going to stick to my two-tone bench, but I'm going to knock one of my tones well down in power it's from 0 to minus 30. Press sweep again. So of course this time the second harmonic intercept points are a nonsense really because we haven't really got a, a second tone, but we get um, a perhaps a more accurate calculation of the one tone second harmonic intercept point. It's only differing to the second or third decimal place at 61 dB, so, so no real difference. To be absolutely sure, I'm going to pop out this bench. I'm going to pop into a one, bar, one tone harmonic balance test bench. So I've got a much simpler test bench, my same amplifier, my same frequency, my same power, just one tone, and I calculate all the levels of uh, the fundamental and second harmonic, and again the second harmonic intercept point using my equation t times fundamental minus the second harmonic. And I get 61.658, so again it's the same answer uh, to the second decimal place at 61 dB, so it gives me confidence that you can actually uh, predict a second harmonic uh, intercept point, one tone, using a two-tone test bench. Uh, and leave the second tone in at its its high level. So let's go back into our two-tone bench, set the power back so we have our two tones. What I'm going to do now is put a big number in here. So I'm going to put, say, four of each tone, fourth harmonic of each tone, and the max order I'm going to set to eight. So basically the max order is no point setting any higher than what A plus B, so four plus four because um, you, just, you, just, you just won't calculate those numbers. So let, let's see what happens when we get uh, when we do this. So again, we can calculate our second harmonic intercept point, our high level output IP2, uh, IP3 at the same time. More importantly now, our spectrum goes 
to up to about eight times our fundamental frequency and we see as well as seeing our third order tones we see intermods we see our fifth and seventh etc so um, this is perhaps the, the most accurate thing to do set your numbers fairly high it obviously takes longer simulation time set them as high as you can and simultaneously we can calculate third order second order second harmonic inset point etc I'm going to do one more simulation before I go. I'm going to sweep this over frequency. So I'm going to sweep the frequency from 9 to 12 gigs in uh, quarter gig steps. And I'm going to plot uh, my important measurements on a graph now. So this is the uh, output third order inset point from 9 to 12 gigahertz, so you see it's about 37 dBm. This is my high intermod second order output intercept point. And what you notice is the rule of thumb is that this should be 10 dB higher than the third order. Second order should be 10 dB higher than the third order. So mid-band of my amplifier is exactly 10 dB. It's less at the band edges or greater at the band edges this side. But in, in the middle of the band it's exactly 10 dB higher. And the second harmonic intercept point is 6 dB higher than the output IP2. So this concludes our tutorial for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, please feel free to visit um, the Plextech RFI website, www.plextechrfi.com, or search for Plextech RFI or Plextech RF integration in Google. Um, if you go to publications, video tutorials, you'll see uh, a fair number of tutorials on all different subjects and I hope they have some use to you. Thank you.